Hi, I'm Andre Pillow, PGA Professional and Development Coordinator for the First Tee of West Michigan. February is Black History Month. It's a time when we celebrate what African Americans have contributed to our great nation uh, and really worldwide. Inventions like the stoplight and the high heel shoe and even the blood transfusion were all inventions um, started and created by African Americans in this country. We also have a rich history in golf. And here at the First Tee, we're sharing some of that information with our students and informing them of the great things that African Americans have brought to the game. So I'm going to share some of that information with you today. George Franklin Grant is the inventor of the modern day golf tee. He received his patent in 1899, U.S. patent number 638920. He was a dentist by trade, and prior to his invention, golfers would have to tee up their ball on a pile of dirt. Grant was also one of the first African American graduates of the Harvard School of Dental Medicine and later became the first African American faculty member at Harvard. In 1963, Althea Gibson became the first African American to play on the LPGA Tour. Known for her success as a professional tennis player, breaking the color barrier at the 1950 U.S. Open and later becoming the first black woman to win a Grand Slam title at the 1957 Wimbledon, winning both the singles and doubles, then following that up with another Grand Slam victory in 1958 at the U.S. Open. Althea Gibson had some success as a golfer, but eventually would return back to the tennis court where she had the most skill. In 1971, she was inducted into the International Tennis Hall of Fame. Renee Powell became the second African-American to play on the LPGA Tour in 1967. In 2003, she received the First Lady in Golf Award from the PGA. Her father, William Powell, had what he called his crazy dream. In the mid-1900s in the United States, golf courses were segregated and there weren't a lot of opportunities for black people to play the game. So Mr. Powell decided to build his own golf course. In 1948, he opened Clearview Golf Club a nine-hole facility that was open to all that could play, black, white, or indifferent. Ironically, this would be the facility where Renee would learn to hone her craft in, starting at the age of three, taking lessons from her father. Mr. Powell received well-deserved recognition by the PGA of America, receiving the Distinguished Service Award in 2009, and later being inducted into the PGA Hall of Fame in 2013. As you can see in this picture, I had the opportunity to play Clearview Golf Club as a young man meeting both Renee Powell and her father, Mr. Powell. My father thought it was important to take me on that trip as a young golfer to show me the successes that we created even during times of segregation. And I thank Renee and her father for being pioneers in the game of golf. Charlie Sifford became the first African-American to play on the PGA Tour in 1961. Considered to be the Jackie Robinson of golf, he challenged the PGA's white-only clause, and he won. Sifford endured humiliation, threats to his life, and mistreatment by other professionals during his time on tour. He played at courses and facilities where he wasn't allowed in the clubhouse or couldn't eat at the restaurants. But that didn't stop him from competing, and it definitely didn't stop him from winning. He won four times on the PGA Tour, Long Beach Open, 1957, Puerto Rico Open, 1963, Greater Hartford Open, 1967, and Los Angeles Open in 1969. He also won the Negro National Open six times. He has been honored by the PGA and was inducted into the World Golf Hall of Fame in 2004. And in 2014, he received the Presidential Medal of Freedom from President Barack Obama. In 1967, Lee Elder raised just enough money to attend Q School for the PGA Tour. He finished in ninth place out of 122 golfers and earned his tour card for that year. In 1975, Mr. Elder became the first African American to play in the Masters, and in 1979, the first African American to play on a Ryder Cup team representing the U.S. against England. He paved the way for a lot of golfers like myself and even Tiger Woods on tour, dealing with a lot of racism but never letting it stop him from achieving his goals. In 2016, for the first time ever in the 66-year history of the LPGA, four black women competed in one LPGA event. The event was the Cambia Portland Classic. The players were Ginger Howard, Mariah Stackhouse, Sedina Parks, and Cheyenne Woods. I was fortunate enough to meet Sedina Parks and Mariah Stackhouse in 2017 at the LPGA Meyer Classic. 
there have now been eight black women to play on the LPGA Tour. Althea Gibson, Renee Powell, Larissa Sugg, Shasta Sugg, Cheyenne Woods, Sedina Parks, Ginger Howard, and Mariah Stackhouse. In 1997, Tiger Woods became the first African American to win the Masters. Considered by many, including myself, to be the greatest golfer to ever play the game, he has over 105 worldwide victories, 79 victories on the PGA Tour, including 14 major wins. In 2000 and 2001, there was a time where he held all four of the major championships. The U.S. Open, the British Open, the Masters, and the PGA Championship. It's called the Grand Slam, or better known as the Tiger Slam. So, as you can see, there have been a lot of contributions by African Americans to the game of golf. And also, for me personally, as a PGA professional, some of my personal experiences with these elements of history have helped to shape and mold me and help me become the person that I am today. So hopefully you learned something new today. Hopefully you're motivated to create your own history. And thank you for watching.